Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in to Coach for Banner. We have an exclusive interview with three generations of men. It is Father's Day weekend, so I would like to pose these questions. When the question is posed to me, how do I feel about Father's Day in 2021? Uh, I'll be honest, I never really felt like a certain way about Father's Day. Um, I always felt like it was lackluster. I felt like um, it just felt like men weren't appreciated. You know, and I'm just, just how I feel about it. I feel like it doesn't get the glitz, the glamour that Mother's Day does. Um, but then at the same time, maybe, maybe it's a reflection saying that fathers ain't maybe giving that glitz and glamour. I don't know. I can only speak to my situation. My situation, I knew who my father was. I knew what he did. Um, I didn't have a relationship with him, so to speak. Um, but I was able to learn things through anything that he did that I thought was adverse. I took that and I used that as like a principle to kind of guide me. Like, hey, I don't like this. So this is something that I don't want to replicate moving forward and in my relationship. So, you know, I was raised by, you know, my uncles. Uh, you know, my mom was one of 10 kids, so uh, I had a lot of influences. My uncle taught me everything. And that's probably why me being an uncle, I'm so involved in my nephew's lives because I understand the importance and they're just like me. And it's crazy, it's like, man, we're 30 something years apart. And I look at them and I'm like, that's me. That's me without a father trying to figure out how to be a man in this world. Yeah, uh, yeah I think Father's Day 2021 is gonna be interesting. Um, just compared to last year, Father's Day 2020, we were like in peak quarantine. So, you know, if you lived apart from your father and stuff like that, you had to do Zoom or virtual, you didn't, couldn't meet uh, or see them in person. And I think with vaccinations and, you know, restriction, restrictions being lifted, I think those face-to-face -face meetings and gatherings will happen this year. Um, so that's something to look forward to. I'm sure a lot of people are excited about that. Um, kind of like, uh, you know, I have a great relationship with my dad. Um, he's, he was a great leader. He showed me a lot of great things, you know, what a father should be, what a man should be. Um, so I'm, I'm thankful to, you know, grown up under his kind of tutelage and leadership. Uh, but with that, um, you know, everything has a pro and a con. It's kind of growing up in his shadow was a little bit intimidating. Uh, he is a, you know, a great man here in this community. And so sometimes I felt like, even as a kid, not knowing how, you know, how big his influence was, I was like, man, I have to do something awesome, you know, being Dr. Banks' yeah. son. Mm -hmm. uh, and that really put a lot of pressure on me in high school when people, you know, are you gonna be a pastor like your dad? Or are you gonna, you know, be a motivational speaker like your dad? And I'm horribly shy, and so I was like, I don't know, do, do, is that what, something I'm supposed to do? Do I have to do that? Uh, and then that also kind of went into college when I went into communications, but more for the technical side of things. Um, but people assume, like, oh, you're going to communications? Great, you know, just like your dad, gonna be a speaker. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm gonna be behind the camera. No, 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 <laughs> I'm gonna be behind a mic mm -hmm. off sc screen somewhere. <laughs> I don't wanna be out in front. Um, so that, I, I've had to deal with that throughout my life. And it's only now that I've kind of found my own lane, um, especially with like photography and the things I do artistically, I've kind of carved my own lane, not, not to be like, you know, you know, forget dad, I wanna do something totally different. Like I still wanna help people and I love the influence he has, but my way is a little bit different. And I'm being okay with, okay, that's, that's, a, that's an all right thing. I don't have to do exactly what my dad did before me. Mm -hmm. okay. Mark? Um. Honestly, when I hear Father's Day approaching, it ain't, it, it's one of those things I think about where uh, who's, who's gonna be appreciated this, this year for me. You know what I'm saying? Because the father that I had, I, I couldn't choose him. And you know what I'm saying? He, he already had a lot of kids. So the attention wasn't, you feel me, put on me. It wasn't really put on none of his kids because he, he had to work majority of the time. And uh, uh, growing up in a situation like that, you feel me, like Father's Day, 
becomes less and less Im- important. Like it's almost like it it'll, it'll fly by and you don't even notice. And you know what I'm saying. So uh, growing up in that kind of predicament, you know, I I kind of push towards finding some somebody who who can be a father figure for me. You know what I'm saying. And I didn't found uh, actually two and three people who great fa- father figures to me. And uh, those are the people who I've, I'll be appreciating. You know what I'm saying? Like, not to. I'm not gonna dishonor my pops because that's that's the lifestyle that he chose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I can't blame him for that. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not looking for him. Do you feel me? Swoop in to be a Superman kind of figure. I, I'm, I'm not looking for that. I'm grown now. So um, I'm still gonna wish him a happy Father's Day. But you feel me as far as like gifts and showing like real deal appreciation, like that don't that don't go to him. You know what I'm saying? That's just being real. It, it ain't yeah. going to him. So. Um, what I would say to somebody who, you know what I'm saying, have an absence of a father, I would uh, uh well, who father is absent, I would tell them you know what I'm saying, to keep moving forward. You know what I'm saying? You just got to push forward. You know, it's 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 a tough road, you know what I'm saying? But if you keep going, keep doing what you're doing to stay stay focused, you know what I'm saying? People going to show up inside of your life who you never expect to show up, you know what I'm saying? And it's some of the most shocking things in the world when that happened because you would never expect it and you never know who it's going to be. So, uh it's, it's powerful to keep keep going. You know what I'm saying? What you say, do, and think is powerful. So if 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 you if you lean in towards, I need to find somebody who can be able to guide me. Best believe you're gonna run into that. You know what I'm saying? And and that person gonna be there to help you out. You know what I'm saying? And it might take you a moment to realize that, but that could be the situation that you in. So just know. That you blessed, man. You 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 really blessed to to be able to run across something like that. Cause that that don't come often. You know what I'm saying? Ben, what would you tell them? Uh, you have your yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I would I would uh, piggyback off of what Amari said. Like, look around in your immediate circle. You know, keep moving. And I wouldn't say you know spend like a whole lot of time looking for that person because you could go crazy doing that. Uh, but you know, look around the people, the resources you do have in your life. And you know, take advantage of you know, you know, teachers, or you know, if you go to church, someone at your church, or something like that, or you know, get involved in some kind of you know after-school activity or something like that, and you know, f- surround yourself with people that will give you those resources to keep you moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, I mean, I just, I mean, you know me, I won't be honest. I would say the, the hardest thing is at some point you have to emotionally address it. Because for me, my father died when I was 17. And emotionally, I thought I was going to be okay. And I didn't, I didn't cry at his funeral services, but I did feel like there was a new void in my life. Because what happened was I kind of, I chose reciprocity to give him what he gave me, which was I wasn't a priority for him, so he wasn't a priority for me. But what I found was, all it did was, it just made sure that that divide was never going to be closed. I don't have any ill will or malice towards him. Uh, I'm finding out that I'm so much like him, but I think it's, you know, I think it's important that a lot of times you'll hear this. You'll hear, well, my mom never talks bad about my father but she don't talk about him at all and so I think it's important you know for me like I'm I'm you know kids you're curious you want to know you know you know what's your dad like you know well me I want to know everything what's his favorite color what did he like to eat what did he dress like like you know did did he read was he in the movies like I wanted to know because I wanted to connect the dots with me like you know that way to me, it was a way to bridge the gap to say, you know what, I'm comfortable with being me because I kind of know why I am this way. You know, and so for me, I just think it's important for, you know, boys, young men, 
and even older men of all ages, like, you got to emotionally ensure that you address it because otherwise you'll be carrying that invisible dead weight for a long time. I I don't, but... <laughs> you know what? I don't. I'll jump in on that. I'm terrified. Not because of me, but because of the way the world has changed that I've witnessed in my time here. When I remember being a youth, I'll tell you this, what I remember about my father. I remember I used to go to the YMCA downtown, Park Avenue, for those of you that are old enough. And I remember maybe about once a month on Fridays, he would be scheduled to come pick me up. And I'm telling you, I was so hyped on Fridays. And I don't know why, out of everything in preschool, this is what I remember. And Fridays would come, and I would always be the last kid there. It's like one of them scenes out of a movie, like I can't make this up. And I remember, it's like, we get out like five. It's like seven, and I'm just waiting. But I'm not mad. I'm just like, I'm anxious. And then seven would come, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, what we finna do? And then, you know, like he said, Pop's got to work because he got to take care of kids. So, you know, he's tired. I'm just excited because he got one of them old custom vans with the table in the back, you know, with the, with the ladder on the back doors. Like, I'm, I'm getting in the van. Ain't nobody in the van but me. Yeah, well, you call it what you want. It was red and with the tan interior, leather, mm-hmm. you know. But, <laughs> yeah. you know, for me, I just always took those little moments as reminders of, you know, to, to him, with him being so tired, it was, okay, it's my weekend to get him. To me, it was like, okay, this is my quality time. And so for me, that's one thing that I try to instill is, you know, just taking time away from all the busy things, putting the cell phones down, you know, and, and really showing my child, whoever you are, whatever you are, however you are, it's important to me. Because I want you to feel free to be whoever you are with me, but I also want you to know that, hey, whatever comes along with you, I'm here for the ride. And so for me, that's the important thing that I think about being a father because there's no handbook to it, but you know, I can tell you one thing. Uh, I ain't going to have you there waiting to sell them, son. Mm-hmm. Ben, what kind of father you um, You know, taking uh, you know, a couple things from my dad, being, definitely being supportive. Um, but one thing I would definitely want to encourage in my own style of parenting is open dialogue. Um, and it's not that I don't have that with my, with my dad or both my parents, but I know, remember growing up, they were so much on excellence and perfection and instilling that in me. Sometimes I felt like if I had a problem, I couldn't talk to them because that, I, I wasn't being perfect or, you know, th- that's not, I don't see them struggle with this thing. So how can I bring that up to them? Will they understand? Will they think something's wrong with me that I'm not striving to this level of excellence and perfection that they've set the standard for? So I just kind of suffered through a couple you know, things in silence um, to the detriment of me. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely. And I don't think, and I don't hold my parents or my dad you know, to, to blame because of that. But just, I think I would be a little bit more intentional of like, you know, with, with my future kids, just like, hey, if you have something, let me know. We're all human, we all go through things. You know, We want to set this standard and this precedent, but at the same time, life happens. So. You know, if you ever feel like you need to say something, go ahead and, you know, let, let me, you know, know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, just uh, going off what, what Ben said, it's, uh, it's one of them things where I would want to make sure that my kid feel hurt, you know what I'm saying, and let them know that uh, his or her ab- opinion matters, you know what I'm saying, because it's, it's, it's real, like you living and breathing and you feel me like you came from me you you important you just as important as i am so whatever you say you feel me i'm gonna have to listen to that whether whether you joking whether you serious whether you you know what i'm saying like all topics i'm gonna have to listen to that you feel me and i'm gonna i'm gonna have to you know what i'm saying make sure that you know that everything you say is important inside and outside of this house you know what i'm saying to me and to everybody else you know what i'm saying don't ever feel like your your opinion or what you say don't matter because everything matters man everything matters i mean i i don't know exactly 
exact numbers. Um, numbers don't really matter. I mean, you can see the impact, um, you know, just by having a conversation with men and younger men just like yourself. Like, we don't look alike, but the similarities in the things we discuss. And I think, for me, I think as men, what's important is uh, we've got to be able to take down like those invisible barrier walls when it comes to you can still be the macho, machismo, whatever you are, but you have to realize, like I'm going to tell you something that, that really bothers me, something I totally hate. I hate when little boys are told, suck it up, be a man. They're a child to a certain degree. Well, to all degrees. But to me, it's like, you know, if a, if a three-year-old falls, yeah, yeah, I expect them to cry. I mean, I, I'm not tripping. I'm, I'm not, I don't think you have to be so stern that you can't still be nurturing and supportive. Now, men and women, of course, show their affection and emotions in different ways, you know, but for me, I think it's just important to be able to provide that support. So not just so that, oh, okay, yeah, my son or daughter feels comfortable coming to me, but they feel comfortable coming to either parent with anything. Because usually what happens is they levitate to mom for one thing, you levitate to dad for another. You know, and that's, I mean, that might just be a natural way that it works, but, you know, I'm just more concerned, you know, with, because I understood, like, the things that I, like Ben said, things that I thought and wanted to come to my mom with. And honestly, I answered the question for her. I was like, well, what is she going to tell me about? Like, I don't know if this is. And so I would levitate to, you know, other men that were in my life because I felt like they could give me a more honest perspective. So, you know, for me, it's just, you know, ensuring that, you know, you provide that emotional support. You know, you know what comes along with taking care of a child monetary-wise, but, I mean, that's just, that's a basic requirement. There are things that are so much more valuable to kids, and I think that's one of them. Dan? Yeah, I was going to say something similar to what LB just said, just kind of, you know, getting in touch with your emotions and, you know, being emotionally vulnerable and honest at times because it, it wasn't to that extent, like, hey, don't cry or whatever, that, but I did feel that kind of pressure. Like, you know, I never saw my dad cry. Um, and so I was just like, that's not something that men do that, you know, so I, I was very reserved in all my emotions. And it's only just now recently that I've learned to, you know, let those barriers down. Um, so yeah, just, uh, yeah, and like Leonard said, I don't know the exact statistics and the in numbers of, you know, absentee fathers and, you know, uh, houses without fathers, but I do think the fathers that are there, you know, can step it up as far as being emotionally available and stuff like things to that degree. Um, I would say, uh, you know what I'm saying, fathers do, do need to step up, but I think it's all in a matter of time. You know what I'm saying? Because in all honesty, sometimes it's too late for you to step up. You know what I'm saying? And with with my pops, he 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 tried to do that. But I tell him, like, hey, I'm I'm grown now. Like I it ain't no, you feel me? I, I can't you can't do this, you can't do that. Like, bro, I'm grown. You know what I'm saying? Them days and years, they over with. You know what I'm saying? And when I go down to visit him, he I think he gets upset and semi-sad because he has no control whatsoever of what I can do and who I associate myself with. You know what I'm saying? And I, I honestly think that scare him because he, he know that he too late. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? Is that, that should be empowering for, for him to see that I can take care of myself. I take care of my responsibilities. You know what I'm saying? I, I know who I'm around. I know that I'm safe. You know what I'm saying? That should be empowerful and will em empowering for him. Um, but in instead, it, it, it just builds another wall of guilt. And you know what I'm saying? And, and that guilt shows you like it, it shows when I have a conversation with him. You know what I'm saying? It would go from him having a conversation to him just saying, right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? And then I don't I don't feel her, you know, and then it's, it's, it's back to square one again. So I would honestly say it's all within a matter of time. So uh, y'all got to step it up fast. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no lie. Y'all got to step it up fast. <laughs>
the layers to it. Um, I think it's I think it's something that we know everyone has some some type of mental health opportunity. Um, but I think for men, uh, I think uh, you know, being touched on it a little bit earlier, it's it was kind of like taboo to like dwell into those emotions and you know talk about. Um, and I'll give you an example. Yesterday, my nephew came home from summer camp. He had an interaction with another young boy over some M and M's, and my nephew. For all intents and purposes, is he's non-confrontational. Ain't nothing like me. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know. But um, I say that uh, because, in, in as an adult, the first thing I thought was it was just M and M's. I never said that because I understand the importance of listening. And so he goes into this story, and I mean, he upset like this little boy like knocked his M and M's out his hand, then like threw it away. You know, just, you know, what kids do, you know. But, you know, in my mind, I could have easily thought and been like, it's just some m and I'll buy you some more. But that would have been dismissive, not to the issue, but to his emotions surrounding it. And so, you know, instead, you know, my conversation with him was, I said, do you ever notice sometimes, like, when your mom gets upset and she, her tone changes with you and you just do what she says? And he was like, yes, sir. I said, because every situation doesn't always want a reaction. And as you get older, you'll learn. You got to pick. Everything can't be a, a war because you're going to be wore out. <laughs> so, you know, for me, I just, um, I never had anybody at any age until I got severely grown, whatever that means. Um, <laughs> and then people would finally kind of, they would slow things down for me. And I think that's what happens that kids are missing is, is a lot of times parents always look at it from their perspective and they respond. But you don't look at things from you're talking about an 11-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 16-year-old. And you can't remember what, how you process things at that age because you was wilding too. But mm -hmm. now you only thing that you, the only thing that you can capture is this current moment that you're in. So, you know, for me, I just think it's important um, to really be able to kind of, you know, and, and pace yourself and exhibit that patience with them, you know, to let them know, like he said, anything that's going on inside or outside of the house is of value and of substance to me. Yeah, I think going to your question, uh, you know, what the effect is, I think it creates a vicious cycle because if the father, you know, isn't emotionally available, and then the kid grows up with this void, and if that's not taken care of, when they have kids, they're not gonna know how to be emotionally available to their kids, and that's just gonna cycle and cycle and cycle. Uh, so, you know, thankfully it sounds like the three of us have had that opportunity in that moment, um, you know, to come to terms with that and move forward and, you know, be better in that regard. But I think a lot of people just kind of move past it, like, well, I didn't grow up with that, so I guess I don't need it, that's not mm -hmm. important. And then, but you, you do need it and it's important, you know, mm -hmm. empathy and caring for others and relating to others and not having that piece of yourself. And then when it's time for you to be a father and, you know, you're supposed to give back to the next generation with that piece, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. And so when your kids are looking for it, they don't have it and then they're going to grow up. And if they don't correct it on their own time or have somebody step in and help them with that, then, then again, they're not going to have it for their children or mm -hmm. the generation behind them. Mm. Um, I feel that uh, just a backbone off to what he said. Uh, the the effect raised questions. You know what I'm saying? Like, is this person actively listening to what I'm telling them? Uh, do this person know what metacognition is? You know what I'm saying? And uh, does he know what em empathy and sympathy is? Just differentiating between the two. Um, active listening is when you're not even worried about what you finna say next. Like you really listening to what the person is saying and you taking it into consideration and you adding value to it. Metacognition is when you aware of your thoughts. So uh, 
Like L- LB said, he could have told him, like, yeah, whatever, man, I, I buy you some more M&Ms. You know what I'm saying? He he was aware of his thoughts. So your thoughts are optional. Your thoughts are powerful. What you say is powerful. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it affects us. You feel me? It affects children. It affects adults. You know what I'm saying? And empathy and sympathy, people get them mixed up all the time. Um, it's one of these things where uh, people show more sympathy than em- empathy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you you feel for me, but you're not inside of my shoes. You know what I'm saying? So you really, you you feeling it from your perspective, like L- LB said, and you know what I'm saying? You're not really taking a dive inside of what I'm what I'm dealing with, you know what I'm saying? So there was no active listening, you feel me, involved in what was going on. So yeah, it's it's, it's effective, man. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Living with Bracken and uh, the male figures that I would like to pay homage to. Um, the good thing about me is the ones that were impactful in my life, um, I was able to tell them while they were with me. And so uh, I never took those moments for granted. But the people that I like to pay homage to are uh, those friends, family, relatives that have lost their father. And to them, Father's Day is just as important as Mother's Day, and for some of them, it's more important. And so, you know, I just want to be, you know, that um, that virtual comfort, you know, that all of them will need because, you know, people, you know, you see pictures and videos of people going to cemeteries to to visit their mother, but you also got just as many people going to visit their father. So, you know, I just want to pay homage to those great men uh, that, you know, did things of wonder and their kids, family, loved ones, appreciate them. Uh, and just let them know that, uh, like he said, um, you know, there are people that, you know, can sympathize with you, but there's also people that can empathize with you and, and truly understand how you feel. Uh, we saying our name? Yeah. Uh, ben Banks, um, definitely my, my dad, uh, Dr. David Banks. Um, and then family members as well. Um, but one specific college professor I had, Jason Glenn, uh, college was, my first two years of college were really rough and he kind of took me under his wing. I was in his philosophy class and even outside of class, he would talk and check up on me, you know, how am I doing? Not just with school, but just with life. Uh, Cause it's, a lot of things happened at once um, in college. So I'm very grateful uh, for him but like LB said, I'm also, you know, my heart goes out to those friends and family I have that don't have their fathers. Um, so just sending them comfort during this weekend. Yeah, that's real. Um, Amari Johnson, um, some, uh, some guys that I, I would like to honor first and foremost, you feel me? Uh, uh, Shane Morrow, uh, Rondell Cryer, uh, Keith Williams, uh, and of course, my, my my pops, Dion Johnson. Um, uh, and the reason why is because every single one of these guys helped me in a way uh, to help me move forward, to help me better myself, to help me see things from not only my perspective, but uh, somebody else's or even the world's perspective. You know what I'm saying? And um, these are... In, powerful people you know what i'm saying and and they helped me uh em, embrace my my errors and they helped me embrace my si- success you know what i'm saying and um yeah man they deserve it but like uh lb and ben said man uh i'm also uh, honoring those fathers who ain't here you know what i'm saying because they they need it too we all human we all make make mistakes but Feel me, we just still gonna keep it on the phone. Yeah.